back. We're back. All right, folks. Um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're, we're actually, you're back early, which is even better. We have a bit more time to, to debrief, and I can probably still have a chance to fall off my chair. Um, okay. How did you, how many, did you answer one or two questions like, like planned? Yeah? Okay. Did you, so you managed to answer the questions? Everyone felt like they managed to answer a question? Okay, let's just go, uh, you guys. What did you, um, which question or questions did you choose to answer and, and what did you get? Um, well, we built the, I guess the simplest one to explain was the how wide is the hallway and we did it in terms of mm -hmm. steps. And then, the, and then you could use that, so it was, it was six steps. And then you could use that to, uh, there's another one. Oh geez, did you go to the back? It was like, it was like, it was like, it was like you were able to use the number of steps and you could figure out how far you were so from So you know when it was like how wide the hallway? Yep. He's 5'8", so he laid down and it was almost double. Ah. 12 feet. You did the lie down trick. Sometimes people will do this and they'll measure body lengths. And then we would estimate how long the hallway would be and this other question asked how many steps would that be. Yep. So he walked through the 12 steps and we had like how many steps per feet were there and then we just Cool. Calculated yeah. the total number of steps implemented. What, what's interesting, so the interesting, I just want to call it one very interesting thing, is that you immediately mapped to units that, we, that we've all agreed on using, that are sort of arbitrary units, like uh, five foot eight. I mean, the idea that we have feet and inches and, and centimeters and meters is actually they're arbitrary units that we've chose to divide our world. Um, but you did two acts there. One is that you actually you measured in terms of physical properties, like one thing that you might you might actually have ready access to is your body length, how many body lengths. There's a second step there, which is then translating that into into units we've all agreed upon. But we often forget that those are actually two separate things from the the stream of experience of a, a system making a, a forecast about the world. The most immediate, readily accessible thing is the data streams that are accessible to it. So it's a, like it's cool. Like let's keep that in our mind's eye is that we. Um, that we often do that mapping in a very intuitive way. And we don't even think about it. Uh, but when we're starting to work with systems that are learning about their world, that mapping is something that may not be inherent or intuitive. And it might actually be that, you're, that the way that we're viewing the, the units of the world is radically different from the, the, the base representation of our learning systems, body lengths or something else. So would a machine that did a similar thing to us, like when you, if you started to go through the... Uh, like the, the, the width of the hallway, the length yep. of the hallway, would it just stop at using like its its length or using its size as the unit? Because basically what we did was took yep. my body length and then we knew the yep. standardized uh, length of that and then extrapolated that totally. to the width and the length. So would it just stop at the... It, if you took a purely constructivist view, I think you'd have to because there is nothing else. Um, so we, we talk about knowledge as well and definitions. Uh, that's a, perhaps a more, a more sophisticated thing is to actually try to generate a, a standard of representation that extends beyond the signals available to your body. So absolutely, that would be something that at a very base level, you wouldn't expect that the system would be able to do unless someone from outside the system were to engineer that in or to help teach that system how to measure in those units. Like we teach our kids how to measure in different units and things like that. Um, but at the beginning, it's like, meh, meh. And the kid's like, okay, I, I'm projecting into the mind of my nine-month-old right now. And he's probably like, longer than my arm? Not longer than my arm. Like, th th these are the natural sensory motor signals, and many of our learning machines are functioning at that level. So it's an interesting perspective. Um, maybe uh, other folks, what, what kind of signals did you choose to measure? Uh, starting at one end of the hallway, the length, we mm -hmm. saw the panels, so we counted how many there were. Ah, cool. And they were roughly, they're, they're like 27, they're roughly a meter, maybe some larger, some smaller. So nice. So this is a different. This is cool. It's a different strategy. Uh, you use visual stimulus and you saw patterns. And then as you were moving down the hallway, or you're like looking across the hallway, you're you're moving with your head, not with necessarily with your with your feet. Uh, you were looking at the repetition of visual patterns. So that's a cool. That's another thing that you might see directly from the data. Now, then, of course, if you want to map it to meters, uh, you that's that next step we just talked about. But in, in terms of visual patterns, uh, yeah, you like there's a repetition in the paneling. You found some structure in the world, and you've used it to, to essentially to categorize or to, to try to learn the, the distances you might have in the world. Um, so for your example, it's probably fairly straightforward. How many times would you need to do that to get a, re a reasonable answer? Maybe twice, just for certainty. 
Sure. Yours is a pretty reasonable example because there, there's something very consistent about if you have a principled way of actually doing that counting. Uh, for things like body lengths or steps, if there's any variability, you might have to run that process over and over again. Uh, did you, by any chance, do steps down the hallway? Did you? No? Okay, no one did steps. This is a weird, this is a weird sample. We usually we have someone that does, uh, that just does like foot over foot over foot over foot to measure. Um, but uh, which one did you do? We did a few. Um, for the one where we had the width of the hallway, um, I had my partner stand up and I put my arms like, essentially across his body length and then we converted that to his height and then I essentially used my arms to see how, how far we yeah. go to uh, essentially cross the width of the hallway and we got 12 feet 6 inches. Cool. Uh, the hallway, so I mean this hallway actually is fairly clean, but you know the hallways that sometimes have the divots in them and the scalloping, um, if you were actually trying to get an estimate of the width of the hallway, you can only, you can only output one number, let's say you do it in arm lengths, just to be very, uh, to, very uh, to base it in your sensory motor stream in, in, in arm lengths, um, what would you have to do to get, a, get an expectation of the, of the width of the hallway at all points? To do one measurement? You'd have, to, well, you'd have to get one number at the end. I, I like say, hey, I just need a, I need a back of the envelope computation. How wide is this hallway? But the hallway's wiggly. Yeah. So what would you do? Okay. You take a width measurement at every point along the hallway and then take an average. Yeah, that's a totally reasonable thing to do, is right? So, and that's the same as if you have a, a, a single hallway you're trying to walk down and there's variability in the way that you're walking down. Maybe you're not really good at taking even steps. If you're counting based on foot over foot over foot, um, maybe there's wind. Maybe so. It, it, this is how machines. I, I really I, like. I like this exercise because it gets you inside the head of the learning algorithm and understanding how it might start to to sample the information in the world and try to make reliable estimates. And sometimes those estimates are reliable, and sometimes they really, really aren't. If you look, don't you can take the worksheets home. I have I have more. If anyone who didn't get a worksheet wants to take take one home, um, but on the back side I have like rolling ten sided die, and if you roll certain things, you move forward or backward. This is what the world's actually like. There's a lot of stochasticity in the world. It's a highly variable world. And so to make good estimates, a learning machine might need to, to tr run many little experiments for itself to actually try out different actions and seeing the outcomes. And it, a system might need to do that many, many times to go get a good estimate. Um, all of the things we do in statistical machine learning are really based on these, these sort of ideas. And just to go back to our learning objectives for the, for the class, because um, we're wrapping up now, uh, really I was hoping that we'd talk and think about intelligence and maybe more so, my colleagues I'm sure did a better job than I did in, in outlining machine intelligence and AI, but really I want you to think about intelligence and what might or might not be part of intelligence and how you choose to define it. To think about learning systems and what that adds to the story of intelligence and why we might pursue um, learning machines especially to improve our quality of life. We looked at what machines might learn and I said really representation, prediction and control and pursuit of goals. Um, how they might learn, we talked about learning through, uh, through pairs of samples and labels. We learned about, uh, we talked about learning through the, the inherent structure of statistics of the world. We, we also talked about learning through trial and error and that we might do those kind of things either in batches by seeing lots and lots and lots of data that maybe was collected through, through customer recording of web page traffic or in real time like you were doing out in the hallway. And, and we explored the sort of the fusion of these things through the exercise. So th that was my learning objectives and, and hopefully you got that through the class. Um, if not, next time I'll go back to using slides. <laughs> hey, anyway, thanks so much folks. I think we're done. Uh, did you want... <laughs>